Voilà. Go. Welcome to When We Pray. Well, we thank you all for being here today, for for us uh, coming together as a body in Christ to pray and to uh, lift up the petitions of all those that are online and all those that have uh, put in their requests throughout the week. And um, so we just thank you all for being here. Thank you all those that are going to tune in on, on social media or that is tuning in right now. We thank you for standing there with us and uh, at home or if you're in a car or you're driving, you can still pray with us. If you're, I mean, I don't expect you to text and drive or anything, but you can listen to it on the radio, you know, plug it in. But wherever you at, just tune in with us and just help us pray and pray for these petitions because um, that's what the, the, the privilege that we have to come before God to pray and speak with God, right? We Sometimes we think that prayer is such a, a, a thing that, that sometimes uh, is only selective people can do. But prayer just means you talk with God. That's pretty much what it is. You talking with God. You talking with your Father and just expressing yourself and, and listening is part of prayer too. It's listening to, to the voice of God. It's not just us telling him what to do or how to do it and when he needs to do it. But it's also bringing it before him, but then listen for the response. Amen. Amen. All those that are on, on social media or you want to go ahead and text in your number, your, your request, uh, you can text it into 386-785-5878. And the number is back here on the screen. You can see that there on social media. Uh, just go ahead and tune it in. There's somebody with a phone. Just... Uh, They'll take in the request and, and pray. You can do it online as well, either on YouTube or on Facebook, and just write it in there, and we'll get it written down, and we'll nail it to this cross at the end, and we'll pray for it throughout the week. So we just thank you all. This is Jason with me today. He's going to be helping us out here and pray. And uh, so before we get started, let's just go ahead and uh, open it up with prayer. So we'll open it up with prayer, and then we'll get started. We're also doing a study on the book of uh, Secrets of the Secret Place, <coughs> and uh, we're on chapter 15. And so we'll be going over that today while we're, we're, we'll be uh, praying for these petitions here. So Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you're such a gracious God, a loving God. We thank you for the opportunity to come here before you, Lord. To, to, to come into the holies of holies, to lift up these petitions to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for, for giving us this privilege, Father, that we're able to stand in the gap for those, Father. Those that sometimes don't know how to draw themselves near to you, Father, but you can use your children, Father, to draw them to you, Lord. And we thank you. We lift them up right now to you, Lord. We lift them. Father, we just thank you for your presence. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord. Father, as we lift up all these petitions up to you today, Father, we thank you for all the answered prayers today, Lord. Father, have your way today, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit, Father, do what he wants to do, Lord. We give him full reign, Father, full permission for him to do what he wants to do, Lord. Because you're God and we're not. So, Heavenly Father, you know what we need more. And we thank you for it right now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, before we get into these prayers, and we'll, we'll, we'll allow uh, uh, more people on social media to write more stuff in and everything, we're going to go ahead and just kind of go into the study first and get that, uh, uh, start that going and, and get that going so that uh, gives more time for those out there to tune in and, and write their requests in. So today, the, the chapter... Is called the secret of radiation therapy. Radiation therapy. So, let me change this down. Has anybody read that? Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right. Oh yeah. So we got a lot to say about it. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> your, your head was shaking this way. You mean this way? <laughs> you mean up and down? You have. Oh yeah, we're shaking the wrong way. I was just oh, wanted to make sure you know. Um. So, okay, so um, the secret of radiation therapy. And, and let me go down here. Now, obviously, he's talking about sin in our lives, 
right? He's comparing this to a cancer, basically. And the sin is not about a sin because he says here in the beginning that he says that we struggle. We all struggle with things. We all struggle with things and some, some might struggle more than others in certain areas. And, and he goes on to say in this uh, uh, first uh, paragraph, basically, that, you know, sometimes it's our life that we, that we had before we came into the things of the Lord that perhaps we, we partook in those things a lot more than others. And, and maybe to me, uh, 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 one thing is it's easier for me to get over because I tried it just a few times, but yet somebody that did it for a long time is going to be a harder, it's going to be more roots inside of them to break. But they might be, get over something easier than what I would because I dabbled in something different than they did. You see, so it, it goes, so he's not just basically uh, uh, saying, talking about, he's just talking about that habitual sin, that sin that doesn't seem to want to go away, that sin that basically was rooted inside of you back then and 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 how we start breaking that pattern. Mm -hmm. All right, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, I like this part here. I highlighted where it says sin is like cancer. And then he says, God's presence is like radiation on that cancer. Sure. Amen. You know, so that presence of God coming into his presence is that radiation that we need on the sin. So that sin in our lives, basically, the whole thing basically comes down to the more, the more you, you soak yourself in the things of God, the more you're... you're you're listening to him, you're, you're, you're reading his word. He says the longer you're in his presence, soaking in his word and basking in his love, the more power you're ingesting into the very fibers of your being. The only way we change is when we come close to the Lord, his presence is the place of change. Just the next couple lines here. It says, uh, distancing ourselves from God always produces spiritual regression. Proximity to God always produces spiritual progression. And that's what happens, right? When we feel kind of ashamed, we feel because we did something wrong today. We get shame. We're like, I don't know how to come before God. I don't know. I just can't get into that That place of worship anymore right now because I got this thing I know I should have had done this and I did it and and it draws you away from God it's to separate you and 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 you know drawing closer to God is where that you get stronger to get over it go ahead she's got something I knew she had something she should have that the wrong way I knew I knew it was different if she was doing this I knew it had to go like this it's not always not praying that distances you distances you from God. A lot of times it's just not going to church, not attending. I was in a church once before, believe it or not, and I, um, I didn't feel a part of the church, so I didn't go regularly. I was a lot younger, too, and I didn't go regularly. The pastor told me when I requested prayer for something, he told me because I was, he called me a backslider, so I was kind of pushed aside, and that distanced me from God as well. Just being, or not being a part of the church and the family of the church, right? that will distance you also. I didn't have the guidance. Like he's saying here, it'll bring you back into his presence. I didn't know how. Right, right. But now I'm here, and I'm thankful for all the family that I do have here. Amen. 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 Not yet. Okay. And they, um, I mean, a lot of times we're, we're the problem. We're that voice that he talks about here, about the listening to the voice. And sometimes... The people within the church become the voice that pushes you away. Yeah. From it. You see? And but God is trying to draw you back to him. 
And that's what we have to be very careful on, on what we say, how we say it. Yeah. You see, because words have power. Words and have power. Continue to encourage everybody. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, there's there's a. Uh, uh, well, I'll talk about George later on in the, in the next thing. Because we were just talking about some of the same things. Does anybody? You got something to say? Oh, you know, I can have a I know. <laughs> Get him a mic. <laughs> you know. like, what happened with it? Fix the mic. Oh, raise it up. It should be, I think, number four. It works. We Check for it. Yeah, we can hear it. John says he's not getting all of that on YouTube. Right. You're louder. Okay, let me see. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, um, also, uh, I see Tom the Avenger is online. He says Laverne is in rehab, but is doing better. She just needs strength to walk. And Shannon Avenger is online, and you said, Jason, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> and also, Walter is online as well. And, uh, uh, and Maureen Henry is watching. I do, Shannon. Okay. Well, anyway, back to what we were talking about. <laughs> You know the, the the part of the part about the uh, radiation. Right. You know the thing I liked about that is really remember when God said you you know you, you know you can't look on His face, you can't look on His, you can't you know because of how bright and right. everything that He is, you know. And I'm thinking that because when sin is in you. And you get closer and closer to God. The sin can't survive because mm -hmm. sin can't survive in the presence of God. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it's saying that the closer you get to God, you know, and, and, and that's why He says things, you know, like we ought to draw nearer to Him. You know, and people say, "Oh, I wonder what that means." We get closer to Him because once we get that bond with Him, and once we get that. Uh, relationship with him then you want to please him mm -hmm. and those things you know you don't want to do you know right. because it's like now I don't want to disappoint my father I don't want to disappoint God you, 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 you know so the closer you get to him and the more your love is for him then it's like radiation in the sense of sin can't survive where God is right you see what I'm saying mm -hmm. sin can't survive where God is, and, and, and that's the part I love about it, and that's why I love the Lord, is because the more and more that you love him, the less and less that those types of sin can really grab hold of you. Right. Because, because believe, because most people, they blame Satan, okay, they say, well, Satan made me do this, you know, or whatever, but God gave us power over that. Mm -hmm. Okay, but our power is in God, not in us. Right, right. You know, so the closer we get to Him and the more knowledge of Him that we have, you know, as they say, whoop, there it is. Right. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh. Yeah, He'll burn it out. He'll burn it out. Oh. Somebody else? Is uh, Doug, you looking for the mic? Doug, the mic, she has it. Oh, oh okay. He's just thinking. Just checking. Right here. Uh -oh. You know, how you call it, for you to, for you to know that there's sin, you need to know that you're sinning, you know? And the thing is that a lot of times you say, well, why do I feel like that? Maybe the Holy Spirit is tugging on you that you're doing something wrong. If you don't know what's wrong, you can't fix it. You can't deal with your issues. So that's a lot of times when we get closer to God, we say, why, why, why do I feel guilty about this? Why we, well, how about if we say it a different way? What is God dealing with me? 
What does he want away from me? What does he want to fit in me? What does he want to change? A lot of times we don't want to deal with our past. We don't want to deal with anything in our lives. And we're doing wrong because God's telling us, hey, go into that other department because there's something that I need to deal with. Not everything is a problem. Not everything that is revealed to us is a problem. It's a solution. Because the thing is, God wants to go in that part of your life and say, hey, it's time for you to turn around. You know? Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's basically what this part here was talking about. It says the purpose of the voice of condemnation is to push you away from his presence. Exactly. And that's that guiltiness. Exactly. That flesh is going to take you away. That flesh is going to tell you you're no longer, wow, you're a Christian and look what you're doing. And this and that, you're so-called, you know, you messed up again, you know. So that which is the very source, he wants to push you away from his presence, that which is the very source of your victory. This is the purpose of the voice of conviction is to press you into the face of Christ. You can distinguish between conviction and con- condemnation by considering which direction the voice is goading you, towards or away from the Lord. And that's how you know. If whatever you hearing in your head, whatever voices are coming into your mind at that very moment, then you can say, is it from God or is it trying to draw me away from God? That's like today, for me. Right after you asked me to, to help, you know, to do this with you tonight, it was, you're not good enough. You're not able to do this. You're not, again, good enough. Right. And that's where I stepped up and said, you know, yeah, I am. And here I am. Amen. Get behind me. Uh-huh. And the Holy Spirit oh, yeah. will bring you what you need to say, when you need to say it, and how to say it. Amen. That would be why I'm quiet. I'm just... Slow to speak. There you go, bro. That's right. I mean, it, it could be in anything. Even, even, even like he was just there out there mowing. Mowing. It wasn't that he was doing the sin, but he was just mowing. And I came up and asked him. And yeah, the enemy will stop you. Mm-hmm. You know, the voices in your head, the, the, the flesh. No, don't go up there. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> right? But yeah, one day, each and every one of you here will be up here one day. Um. (laughs) I'm prophesying. I'm just letting you know. I'm prophesying. (laughs) You know, and it could go both ways because at the same time that he doesn't believe in self, sometimes we don't believe in and the thing is that we have to be metal sharpens metal, where I sharpen you, you sharpen me, you know? So the same way that a lot of people grow, not only because of themselves, but it's because people might not believe in that person. Yeah. So it goes both ways, yeah. you know? We as a church, together as a church, we lift up each other up as a body. Amen. I lift you up and you lift me up. You know, and like that, we grow together in spirit, allowing you that a lot of times you could be anywhere and think, oh, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. But I go to you and say, I I think you're good enough. Even though he says two words right now, he accomplished something he has not accomplished before. By what? By somebody believing in him and another person listening and saying, I might not be good, but I am going to stand. You know, I'm not going to listen to those words, but I am going to go. I might say two words, but that's what I did better than before. And we lift up each other as a body, as a body, a strong body in Christ. And what makes the group a, a, a strong body is all together, all together working together for one thing. Amen. It's to glorify his name. Yeah, and he doesn't know that being up here, he's being viewed by 10,000 people watching him right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't scare me. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah. here, you know, it, when you keep reading down in this chapter, it talks about how the presence of God, the presence of God will can uh, consume us. Right? The presence of God can consume us. And he says, I will not go up in their midst lest I consume you on the way. 
in Exodus 33. And he's talking about he can't be in the midst of the people because he was going to consume them because of his holiness and their sinfulness could not abide together. Right. So just just imagine us, us coming to God, right. knowing that he lives inside of us, Amen. even though we commit mistakes. But it's because we're righteous, of course, the righteousness of Christ through the Holy Spirit. Amen. That allows us to be still be still here with God's presence inside of us and around us. Amen. Amen. Exactly. That's right. That's what I believe. Not on not only that, I, I, God is or should be everything in our lives. Okay. And I think a bigger problem is people look at God as an entity off in mm -hmm. space somewhere. But see, he isn't that. He he is everything that you need to be to survive in this world. Right. He's everything you need to to find your way in this world. You know, God is everything. And, and once we get that understanding and know that he, he his spirit lives in us and all of those things, then we can get closer to him. But if we keep viewing him as this thing too far away to matter, then you're gonna have those issues. Right. Because you don't, because basically you're saying you don't have a relationship with him because he's too far out in the atmosphere or mm -hmm. too far out in the cosmos or whatever word you want to use right. when he is in you. Right. His spirit lives in you. He is part of you. Mm -hmm. Allow him to help you. I mean, it's a shame that we have God in us and we don't allow him to help us. Mm -hmm. Through our everyday, every day. Right, right. You see, I mean, we we need to let him know that every part of our life is important to him. He 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 loves everything about us. So we got to stop trying to hide stuff. Stop trying to act like stuff don't exist right. because he knows everything about us. Mm -hmm. You know, and and we can come to him not like what you was reading about back in the day. They didn't have Jesus' death on the cross mm -hmm. to purify them like we do. So we can go straight to the Lord and say, Lord, I messed up. Right. You see? And don't be afraid to be in his presence. We should want to be in his presence. Mm -hmm. We should live to be in his presence. And the closer we get to him, those things that are deep in our deep in us because of the way we live or the way we grew up, those things that are deep in us, they still have to go because God is filling you up. Correct. You see what I'm saying? God is filling you up with who he is. Mm -hmm. So therefore, there's no room for who you were. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And, and here, I got this quote it says, the people had to maintain their distance in order to survive. So think about that. They had to maintain their distance from God yep. in order to survive. But their distance from God caused them to deteriorate into further sin. Yeah. Which in turn required that they maintain their distance. Because they still couldn't come to God because they'll die. So they couldn't step anywhere close to the, to the tabernacle or anything because of, of God's holiness. So this was a hopeless pa pattern that God had to remedy. And the only solution was the cross of Christ. That's it. So it says, now through the blood of Christ, sinful man is able to come into the immediate presence of the holy God and subject himself to the glory that will change him. Praise God. That's the only thing that would change. You know, a lot of times we want to change people, right? We want to force it on them. We want to change people. We want... People, no, you're going to do it this way. This is what you got. Yes, there's a way of teaching and you teach each other, right? We sharpen each other up. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with correcting one another. Just say, hey, this stuff that you're doing is not correct. You know, it's not good. It's, it's God. So let's help one another to grow in Christ, not condemnation, but to bring awareness to sharpen each other. We have to sharpen each other because the scripture wouldn't be there for that, right? To, to help each other. So it's sometimes we take it because we, we feel guilty and we think already that the person is judging us. 
we think that the person is just saying something wrong, right? Don't judge me. <laughs> we think that 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 we're being judged already because a brother or sister came in and, and brought something to your attention that needed to be corrected. And that's not judgment. God requires us to, to look after one another, to be accountable to one another. Helping you learn. Exactly. It's like my kids, if I see them doing something wrong, do I just leave them and don't say anything? No, I have to bring it to their attention. I have to say, no, you can't keep doing this. This is gonna lead you down the wrong way. So am I judging them? No, I'm, I'm bringing uh, an awareness. I'm trying to lead them the right way. I've already been there. I know it's not going to lead anywhere. I know it's going to take you away from God. I want you to draw closer to God. So we misinterpret that sometimes and we call it judgmental. You see, it's not, it's not the thing is that because nowhere, nowhere in, in, in scripture says you, you, you leave a brother or sister the way they are. Right? Because love changes. Yeah. Love changes, but love also corrects. Yeah. And that's why he says that he chastises those that he loves. Yeah. So if he loves you, he's going to correct you. So correction is, is still a form of judgment, but it's the type of judgment God wants us to make. Yeah. It's a type of correction. You see, not a condemnation judgment, but a correction judgment. That this needs to change. This You can't keep going on this way. And there's nothing wrong with that because you know why? Because as brothers and sisters in Christ, we're all going to stand before God. And he's going to say, why you didn't say something to this sister? Why you didn't say something to that brother? When I put it in your heart and in your mouth to speak and you did not speak because you was afraid that you're going to judge me. You're going to hurt their feelings. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I'd rather hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. But to, to, to help you to come because it's not about your feelings it's about saving your soul getting right before god and i'm not saying that that as pastors that we got it 100 percent. you know we make mistakes along the way too that's why as congregations as a body you guys got to hold us accountable and hold us too the same because we, we, we we're here to, to sharpen one another like i said before and it's it's so that we all grow because why because if there's uh, it's like is what's the scripture that says uh, um, if there's a sin or, or the, the yeast in the lung, it will, it will affect the whole lung, yeah. right? If we allow things to keep happening because nobody changes because we don't want to upset feelings, then what happens with the body? The body will break apart. That's why church is split. Right, because we're afraid to correct. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're afraid to correct. Yeah. You know. Um, you were talking about uh, you were talking about the, the correcting one another mm -hmm. when you actually correct somebody the Holy Spirit will tell you what if that's correct or not correct that that person is telling you right yeah um, the deeper you go with God what Frank was saying the deeper you get with God the more the Spirit speaks to you and in the scriptures, it tells you that he will manifest himself to you mm -hmm. and show you. You're telling me to hold it up. There we go. Is that better? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> he will manifest himself to you if you get to that level. It just depends on you getting to that level. That's the level I want. I want to be in complete surrender, complete humble to the point where I get more than just goosebumps when I talk about it. Okay. And that's the, the, the power of the spirit is when you get to that level. I mean, P, uh, Peter and Paul, Paul, he got to that level. And he he corrected everybody in the scriptures as you're reading them. He, there's a correction for everything that they're doing. And that's where we have to get to. I have to get to. I'll, I'll put it on me. I, I have to get to that point. We all do. Okay. Wow, Lord. We're getting towards that. We're getting all these prayers we got to get to here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but it says here, I like this part too, where it says the effects of radiation are always delayed. I know because I feel it usually at the end of the day when I'm already getting home. Mm -hmm. It says the same is true with God's glory. When you spend time in his presence, your first your first thought is this isn't accomplishing anything. I've been to church. It doesn't do anything to me. I've been there. I sat there. I 
been going through the music, I feel the same. I don't know why I'm still feeling all this, right? But it says, however, if you will believe the truth and just devote yourself to mega amounts of time in his presence, the effects of spending time with him will eventually manifest. Mm. Yep. You see, because it's gonna start drawing it out. Because why? Because it's how much you want, you're willing to let go. Mm -hmm. How much you're willing to surrender to him. Yep. You see, you don't just walk in through the doors and, 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 and that's it, you're done. It's about you surrendering. The more you let go, the more you let him, the more eventually you'll feel. The, 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 the eventually, it'll start manifesting when you start thinking back, as it says out there, that, wow, I used to like all this. I don't like doing that anymore. I used to listen to all this. Now I don't listen to that type of music anymore because there's an effect already happening. That's how you know you've been surrendered and you're constantly letting your life go and letting him take control. Amen? Amen. Anybody else got anything to say before we go into the prayers? Are you raising your hand up? Can't see. No, sir. He's okay. got his hand up. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, so let's get into these prayers. And, oh, I can pick that up. And then... Okay, so we got all these stacks here. Yeah, that's your stack. That's my stack. <laughs> I have this one card. All right, so let's go down the list here. Oh, that's... All right, Pat, you have here Jim and Beverly had accident. Jim's neck and back put him on it. Oh, he has a lot of pain for his, his neck and his back. Um, he has a lot of pain. Beverly has a scar on her chest. Um, oh, like the steering wheel. Okay. So, um, yes, I think I remember reading that one there. Um, all right, so let's pray for them both, Jim and Beverly. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jim and Beverly, Lord. Father, we thank you that you spared their lives, Lord Jesus. So that, that's telling me that they still have a purpose here on earth, Lord Jesus. So Heavenly Father, we ask you, Father, for, for, for healing over Jim's body, over Beverly's body, Lord. But Father, we, we don't know who else was involved in this accident, Father, whatever other families, Lord. So we, we lift them up in prayer as well, Father, all those involved. Father, we, we pray for, your, for a miraculous healing over their bodies, over their, their, their internal, Lord. That, Father, hallelujah, that they can use this and walk out of this, Father, to, to testify. Father, it's not about uh, who's in the right or the wrong, Father, but that, 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 that your hand was in the midst of this situation. So, Heavenly Father, we lift them all up to you, Jim Beverly, and all those who were involved in this crash. For your divine interve intervention in their lives, Lord. That, Father, that they see that if they don't know you, Lord, that, Father, that they, they see that they, they, they could have slipped away into eternity forever. Mm -hmm. In just a blink of an eye, Lord. Father, let this bring an awareness into their lives, Father, that they need you every second of their life. And we pray for salvation over them, over Jim and Beverly and all those that were involved in that accident, Lord. And we lift them up to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Uh, this one's for Pat's. Yep. This one's for Pat's daughter. Uh, prayers for uh, her daughter to find a job. And she needs it. Uh, prayers for her, bro uh, her brokenness. Your brokenness? Where's Pat? That's Pat's right. Brokenness? Yeah. That's his wife. Prayer for, uh... Hmm. What are they? Breathing, man? Breathing. Oh. Breathing. Breathing. Okay. Yeah. Breathing. That sounds like a good word. I'd rather that one than the Thank you. part. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well, Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We yes. lift up Pat's daughter to you, Father God. Lord, we just ask that you give her the, the job that she needs. But first of all, yes. Lord, if, I don't know if she's saved or not, but I ask for salvation, deliverance. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And Father God, um, let her just find you that you are the provider of her life mm -hmm. and becomes the provider of your life. 
of her life. And I just I just thank you for that. And, and we ask for Pat's breathing, that you would make her lungs whole again, Father God, like they were brand new, that she will just start breathing normally. And she yes. will start walking out of here normally yes. and start running down the aisles and, and just praising you and glorifying you, Father yes. God. And we just give you all the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That was George, okay. You played that one. Yeah. That was George. Lynette? Lynette. Lynette. I'll do Lynette. Okay. I'm sorry you're not feeling good, Lynette. I guess Lynette's not feeling good. She doesn't have the symptoms on here, but uh, Lord, you know what they are. So, Father God, we lift up Lynette, Father. We ask that you touch her and just heal her um, sickness, Father God. We, we uh, Jesus took the stripes, Father God, for our sicknesses. And we just Thank praise you and glorify Jesus. you. Father, we just thank you for her healing, because I'm going to declare it now that she is made healed in yes. Jesus' name. And we just thank you, Father. And yes. We Lord. give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so there was one here for these two are the same thing. Okay. Need prayer for Christina uh, Pick Pickard. Cancer in both breasts? Yeah. Okay. Heavenly Father, we lift up Christina to you, Lord Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, there is nothing, there is no sickness, there is nothing, hallelujah, that you cannot cure, Lord, that you haven't already healed in Jesus' name. So, Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over her body right now over the areas where the cancer is at right now, Father, that the doctors have diagnosed as cancer, Father, we call it to be free in Jesus' mighty name. We declare every cell, everything that, 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 that's causing this cancer, Father, to begin to dissolve and shrink back in Jesus' mighty name, Father. Father, we declare the blood of Jesus over her right now, over her body. We thank you for her healing, Lord. We thank you for her right now, Father. Father, if there's any type of uh, uh, unforgiveness in her life right now, Father, allow her to let go, Father. Let go right now in Jesus' mighty name. We know that sometimes we, we bring on things in our lives, Lord, because of what we hold on to, Lord. So we come against it right now in Jesus' name. Whatever is tied that this is tied to, Lord, we rebuke it in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, touch her. Touch her heart, touch her mind, touch her soul. And we thank you for it right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, this one's for Becky. She's not feeling well again. So I guess little John's taking care of her tonight. Uh, so we'll just lift up little Becky and little John in this prayer. And Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We lift up Becky to you, Father yes. God. We know what she's been through. We've seen what she's been through. And Father, we've seen you pull her out of every single situation. And Father, we just ask that you lay a hand on her tonight, Father God, that you will remove the sickness from her. And we just lift up little John too as, as he uh, tends to her and takes care of her. We ask you to give him strength and, and peace and just anything else they need, Father God, that we don't know about. Father, I just praise you and glorify you. In Thank Jesus, you, my Jesus. Name, amen. Amen. This one's for uh, Melissa Lentz, as well, um, diagnosed with uh, breast cancer as well. So we're going to go ahead and lift her up in this. So Heavenly Father, we lift up Miss Melissa Lentz to you, Lord. Father, we thank you for her, Father. She's your daughter, Father. And you love her dearly, Lord. So, Heavenly Father, we lift her up to you right now. Melissa, put your hands upon the areas, Father, and just begin to declare healing and wholeness right now. 
begin to declare that they begin to shrink back right now in Jesus' mighty name. We're standing in the gap with you to lift you up right now to declare that they begin to shrink in Jesus' mighty name by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit right now to begin to touch you right now and to begin to shrink back all those cells right now that need to shrink. And so we declare it right now. We stand in the gap with you. We thank you, Jesus, for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, Father, we come, uh, this is Laverne. She's in rehab now. I guess she's starting uh, in her recovery phase of her, <coughs> whatever happened to her. Um, but we're going to lift her up right now. Father God, I lift up Laverne to you, Father God. I just want to thank you for this lady, Father, for putting her into my life in this church. She has been a blessing to me. She's yeah. taught me through, th or work, or taught me through stuff and has showed me your glory in her and through her that you use her each and every day, Father God. And I know she's in this rehab center and I know she's just glorifying you and praising you each day, Father. And I just thank you again for her in my life. I like to see her again, so if that's possible, Lord, let us see her again in here in this church. And we just praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. says, uh, this is Betty, free me from my binding spirits, trouble remembering scriptures. Hmm. Can I have a couple ladies lay hands on her, please? Yes. Heavenly Father, we lift up our sister to you. Father, hallelujah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, she surrenders her mind to you right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, the scripture says that we take every thought captive. Father, everything that the enemy is trying to uh, 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 fill her mind with, Father, not allowing her to retain your word, Father, but your word is retained in her spirit and in her heart, hallelujah. Father, we declare that every word that she takes in, Father, that your Holy Spirit will always bring back up to memory in her, Father. So we declare, Father, hallelujah, the mind of Christ over her, and we that the, the helmet of salvation, Father, that she is known that she is a daughter of the Most High God, hallelujah, that, Father, that all scripture that she has read, Father, that has soaked into her, it's in her, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, that she will depend on your Holy Spirit to bring back forth every time she needs it, it will come back because Holy Spirit, you are there to help her, to guide her, to instruct her, to mold her, to change her, to transform her, Father, to make, move her from glory to glory, to be more like your son, Jesus, Father. So we thank you, Holy Spirit, for the work that you're doing in her and through her. Hallelujah. So we speak blessings over her. We speak uh, uh, transformation and that her mind of Christ is over her right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Uh, this is Pastor's dog, Duke. I guess he um, has some kind of made a tumor on his face and uh, he has to wear the cone of shame. <laughs> Oh, I just says I want to see some pictures. But no. anyway, I know you guys love this dog, and this, this dog has been a lot to you guys. And, and you guys, uh, <laughs> you talk about this dog a lot at work, or at least Tommy does. And uh, so we'll just lift up the dog to for you guys. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We lift up Duke, Father God. We ask that you touch this tumor 
And we ask that you just heal us completely, Father God. When they go back to the yes. doctors, there will be nothing there. Yes. To be completely gone in Jesus' name. Thank you. And Father, we ask that you yes. we ask that you give Tommy and Sharon uh, peace with this dog. Yes, Lord. We ask that the, the we ask Thank that you, you just touch the dog, Father God, that they will oh, my mic went off. Um sorry about that. And uh, we just we just um Lift the dog up to you again, Father thank God. You. We just thank you and praise you and glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Uh, is uh, a lady here, folks. Susan and Mom Debbie. Susan is in the wheelchair. Okay, so this is a, a lady at Lowe's. Um, a mom, Mom Debbie. Uh, you said Sue? Susan? Susan. Susan is in the wheelchair. Well, Father God, we just lift up Susan right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we ask that you, <laughs> we ask for complete yes. healing in the legs, Father God, that yes. she would stand up out of that wheelchair right now. Yes, God. Wherever she's at, we ask that you, Thank you that this will become a deliverance if she doesn't know you, Father God, and a salvation all at the same time. Yes. We just thank you and praise you. Holy Spirit, we just ask that you fill her. Yes. And touch her. Reveal Jesus to her that she will come to know him yes. and love him for the rest of her life, Father God. Yes. And we just want to glorify you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Okay. I have one here for George Rivera Rivera, which is <laughs> which is uh we're gonna pray for his total healing. But let me give you a little side story of of, of George here. Uh, George I've known for a long time and um, he's gone ups and downs that that man he's been in wheelchairs and then out of wheelchairs and then back and then, then dealing with other issues and then back and then he was just a gentleman that I said that something was going on with his brain they said there was some type of fluid or mass or something on his brain and it caused him to be paralyzed on one side of his face it was all drooping down and um, the doctors didn't kind of he said that they, they told him that he can have either Parkinson's and because now he's got all this shaking, which he's had before and went away. Now it's coming back. Um, so his nerves are shot, but then he's getting, um, what is that other one? Um, cerebral palsy. Um, they told him that he's possibly that he has cerebral palsy as well because of his body was starting to turn and twitch and, and shake and it was all his arms were going by in his back and he's just all shaking in the bed and he can't, so they're giving him all kinds of stuff to try to calm him down, to try to get his nerves uh, um, in control and trying to get him from twitching. So they're giving him Parkinson's medicine. They're trying to give him uh, things uh, to control the, the, what did I just say? The other one? The yeah. second, whoa, well, I just lost it. So, so, palsy. Thank you. so, they, they're giving him all these things and then he was in rehab for 40 days and while he's there he's going and he's the machine's going crazy because his body is not is, is going through all these uh, uh, things and, it, and it's just shaking his body's trembling and twist switching in the bed and he says as people were coming in to, to, to check on him and everything he begins to pray for others so he's praying for those that are outside there to visit him and he's telling him that he feels good. He's saying he feels good. He says, I can't explain, but all I can explain that he was telling me out there today, he was like, all I know is that even though I was going through all this, he says, I felt peace. He said, I felt the peace and something that many people did not understand. He says, even though I was going through this, he says, I know I felt the peace and I knew that God was with me. He says at all times, he says, but as I was doing that, he says that people are coming here to pray for me. He says, I'm praying for them and I'm praying for them while they're trying to pray for him. And and he says uh, they even thought that he was uh, 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 some something uh, psychological was going on. So they sent him to, to a therapist and everything. And the doctors, he was praising God in the, in the therapy session. And the doctor there was a believer as well. And. And he says they were both beginning to praise God in the in the service. He, I mean, in the in the session. And he says they're both there yelling hallelujah and just praising God. And then the and the, the therapist said that he was fine. 
his, his <laughs> mind was fine. That there was nothing wrong with him. Um, because he said, I, I know God is going to do something. God is going to heal me. God, He's going through all this. The gentleman next to him is laying in bed in depression everything. And he's trying to encourage this guy to get up. Get up. He said he hasn't getting up off the, off the bed for the last two weeks that he was there for 40 days. And he says for two weeks he was up. Uh, just laying in bed, did not want to get up, did not want to take a shower and everything. And he's trying to encourage the other guy while his body's twitching and turning and doing all this. And he's forcing himself off the bed to go get a shower and do all this and that. So he kept fighting it and, and fighting against it. The doctor is saying that he's going to be in a wheelchair all the rest of his life. He says, you got to accept that you're going to be in a wheelchair the rest of your life. And this is not going to go away. They can't find any any reason that why this is happening to him. So they, they send him out of the rehab still with the condition that he's in. They couldn't do anything for him. They just gave him medication, cerebral palsy medication and some, some uh, uh, Parkinson's medicine to hopefully that'll fix something maybe. But he says it's not doing anything to him. But he says he left out of there still with his body twitching. And he says now he was fine the last week. He still got a little bit of the shaking going on, but he said he hasn't get any twitching and he's walking. The doctor said he had to leave in a wheelchair. He had to be in a wheelchair. He's walking. The doctor said he would never drive. He was driving today. So he's going through a lot, but he says his spirit feels good. He said he feels joy. He feels the presence of God with him. That he says, I know, he says, my spirit is rejoicing and I feel happy. He says, but I know my body is, is going through all this. He says, my body's going through this, but not my spirit. And he was there encouraging others to keep fighting and keep pushing. He said, Jeff, I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep fighting. He says, I'm not going to let this take me down. He says, I might have my little moments where I wake up and I can't get it. He says, but I, I motivate and I call on God to help me, give me the strength to motivate me to get up and I start doing things. So now he just brought a bunch of food here to the pantry. He went around picking up food from these pantry places and that he gave out, he went around giving out food and he still had a car load, a SUV loaded with food, stopped by here to drop it all, all off at the pantry. Mm -hmm. So he's still out there working, doing all that with his shakiness and all this, but he says, I'm gonna still declare that God is gonna heal me all the way. Ooh, come on. All the way. He says, I'm not gonna stop working. I'm not gonna stop, I'm not gonna, uh, allow and take and accept that the doctor saying that I will be in a wheelchair the rest of my life. God. And he says, I already, and God already showed me that he's working with him. So let's lift him up in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Father, we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Mm -hmm. Father, for all that you're doing through George right now, Lord, and what you've been doing through all of his life, Lord. Father, we know that you have a purpose and a plan for him, Father. But enemy always tries to get in the way sometimes, Father, just like in the, in, in the Job. Mm -hmm. The enemy put the sicknesses on him. The enemy put everything on him. But you allowed it for purpose. You allowed it for a reason. To multiply his blessing. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing that you're going to bring upon yes. George. Yes. As Father, as he, as he endures the testing... And we thank you for the healings. We thank you for everything that's coming his way, Lord. And for all the healing that you've already done in him. We thank you for his attitude. We thank you for his passion. For seeking you. Father, let that increase in him, Father. Let the hunger and thirst as he stays closer to you. Walking with you. That the radiation of your presence will begin to take away. Everything that's trying to hinder his body from working for, for working for you, Lord. So we thank you, Father, that you're being a testimony that he can he can testify to others. Never give up. Keep pushing. So we thank you for him right now. We speak that over his life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Yeah, we're going to pray for the food distribution for tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow morning, uh, pray for, uh, they need volunteers. And uh, I'm, I'm expecting a big turnout because we've been having big turnouts every <laughs> every time we have this thing. And they get bigger and bigger. That's right. 
Um, so, Father God, I lift up the food pantry to you, Father God. Yes. I ask that you multiply the food that comes yes. this time, Father God. Yes. And each and every person that comes through this line will get thank something you, good. And Father, I just thank you for the food distribution that we're able to even even be able to, to do this, yes. this food pantry, Father. And I just glorify you and give you all the praise, glory, and honor yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's lift up uh, Israel. So, Holy Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for Israel, Lord. Father, we bless Israel, Father. As your church, we bless Israel. We speak life over Israel, Lord. Father, we know that you protect Israel. You are the protector of that land, of those people, Lord. So, Heavenly Father, we just... We, we, we pray, Father, that, it, that your protection increases, Father, that the people in the surroundings, Father, as they try to wage war, that they see that they're not just waging war on a people, but on a God, the creator of all of heaven and earth, Father, that, it, 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 that the radiance of your presence in their life, in that land, Father, hallelujah, will filtrate through, for, uh, and through every other territory around them, Father. That they will come to the knowing, to surrender to the knowledge of Jesus Christ yes. as Lord and Savior. So, Father, we don't only pray for the protection of Israel, Father, but we pray for the surrounding nations that are trying to wage war on Israel for their salvation, Father. Give them wisdom, Lord. Give the people of Israel wisdom, Father, on how to deal with all this, Father. Wisdom starts at the beginning of the fear of the Lord. Let them seek you first for all the answers, Lord, on how to deal with this situation. And let them wait on your word. And we thank you for it right now. And we thank you and we bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, Father God, I lift up our nation to you, Father God, from that White House all the way to the bottom. Every single yes. person on this in the United States, Father God, I just lift every single one of them up to you, Father God. And this nation is, we're definitely yes. in the end times, Father God, and I just thank you that you're showing us what's going on. And I just, you, I know your hand's in it, and you you just, you have the master plan. Yes. That's all I can say, Father, and I just glorify you, and I praise you for this nation. I thank you for all you've done for us and given us and provided for us, Father God. Because without you, we are nothing. Yes. And I just want to praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, we lift up our missionaries to you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah thank for the Jesus. work that they're yes. doing out there, Father, in all these countries, Lord. Father, yes. we thank you. We ask you to bless them, Father. We speak blessing. Your church blesses them, Father. Hallelujah. Father, that the words, Father, of wisdom, Father, from your Holy Spirit comes upon them, Father, for words of encouragement, Father, for, 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 for just all the gifts of the Spirit to be run rampant within your missionaries, Lord. For them, wherever they step foot, Father, that let your presence be felt there first before they enter, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Let them walk in, 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 in the authority that you've given them, Father. In the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit, Father. To do the work that you've called them to do, Lord. So we speak blessings over all these missionaries that is doing the work of the kingdom in all of the nations. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, let's lift up the petitions on the Ooh. cross. Well, Father God, we lift up the cross to you, Father. We ask that you yes. touch each individual card that is on here. We yes. know you know the need, you know the yes. situations, you know the salvation that needs to be Thank given. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We just ask that your Holy Spirit touches each individual, yes. Father God, that they will come to know you as Lord and Thank Savior. You, Lord. That there will be no yes. doubt that they know you. Yes, no no doubt that they don't know you. And Thank Father you, God, Jesus. we just 
praise you and glorify you and you for Jesus. your son that died on the cross for us to even be able to be a part of this. And we just thank you. Thank you. Lord we Jesus. ask that the Holy Spirit touch again, touch thank every you. individual on yes, this cross from the yes. top of their heads to the soles of their thank feet. Thank you. That they'll penetrate their hearts, Father God, and turn thank back you, towards you so that we can live righteous before you. Yes. And we just want to give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank you all those that tuned in on social media and all those that came here, but tune in again with us on Sunday. So 10 a.m.